Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here, and today we're back in Brick Nottingham, and more specifically to the fairground for another edition of Fairground for Mondays. Now, as is often the case with a large development in LEGO, it's always two steps forward, one step back, and this area is no exception because I kind of figured that the uh, pond or lake that the Pirate roller coaster ride was being built over. Looked a bit small when everything was in place. Uh, so, what I did was got straight onto Bricklink and found somebody with a fair few medium azure plates to double the size of it. Now, I realise that doing every step of the way uh, on an enlargement of something we've already done won't be so fascinating for you. So, I reckon I'll just stop the video, get on with that, uh, and then we can start again when it's twice the size. So, I'm going to start there. Well, what a difference that has made. That is much better proportioned as a lake on a bit of recreational ground that a travelling fairground is using, I think. We've got more of the blue sort of cross section for underneath the water. Uh, next is the shore all the way around. Uh, and it will be a bit easier this time because I've got a few additional parts. You can see those curved bits in bright uh, green and the sort of inverse curves in bright green as well. Uh, which I got at the same time as getting the azure pieces, so that should make uh, the edge a little less square. Well, working on this area continues to be a nightmare, just because there's so many things to consider. Uh, we've got all the structure of the uh, fairground with the cavity and so on. We've got the motor that needs to be encapsulated in some rocks, but in exactly the right place, because none of it can interfere with the ride when I put all of that back, and that needs to be exactly perfect, obviously, for the uh, coaster to go round all the time. Uh, and then I've got to try and get everything looking rather natural on all of the edges. Uh, but it's a lot bigger now, the wet area. Ignore those two green plates in the middle. Uh, the bank looks very natural, I think you'll agree. Uh, and I've added a lot of the plant pieces that you suggested I should last time. I've also made really good use of the curved plates in bright green, one, two, and there's a bamboo sort of under there, uh, and then the inverted ones as well, there and there. So it looks a lot less square, still fairly natural, I think, with a lot more interest, and I just think it's a better shape now. So I think the next thing is to get the ride back on and make sure that still works before I do anything more. Uh, but I have realised that the cable's still out. Uh, which isn't very good. I need to tuck that through all of this uh, into the cavity underneath and then have an extension cable running it to the rest of the fairground. So, yeah, I'm going to have to pull it all up again, I think. Ugh, nightmare. All right, so the water's all back in. The ride is all back in. The motor's back in. Now, I do need to fill in that gap in the rocks, but the outer rocks are in, and I've used slightly smaller burps, uh, basically, to hide the motor so you can kind of see it will be entirely disguised in due course and I put another few little rocks in the water to kind of uh, keep with the pirate theme uh, and I'm thinking it's looking really good and the real proof of the pudding is obviously that the ride still works <laughs> that's kind of essential and if anything it's slightly noisier than it's ever been but it is working so I think I'll stop that uh, it's going to be an absolute cacophony when everything's going. Uh, I've put the fence back in for now. I'm not wedded to that. I'm not a big fan of it, to be honest. But um, I don't know. I get a lot of complaints when I have things like open water and stuff like that because people <laughs> think that uh, minifigures will come to a sticky end. Uh, anyway, one idea that I did have from uh, subscribers was to decorate the rock with some mermaids or more specifically some sirens. So I've put uh, some kind of bodies to start them off there. Now, if you don't know what a siren is, basically it's kind of like an evil mermaid. Uh, and back in the olden days of shipping, uh, they would sing beautifully and look very alluring on rocks. So passing sailors would come and sail nearby to try and see them better uh, and then would have their ship dashed on the rocks and they'd all end up shipwrecked. So uh, they were sort of very beautiful looking creatures that were actually very evil and trying to bring sailors to their doom. So that's the story there. So I thought that was a really good idea to have, you know, as an extra bit of my pirate ride. So I'm very happy with the fact that the water is much bigger now. It doesn't look like sort of an accidental little splot of water, but looks more, you know, in keeping with the rest of the fairground area. 
Uh, and you can see I've kind of filled in all the gaps now, so it's kind of perfect. Uh, but the next thing to do is kind of dig a hole here to put in another one of my many rides. Now, I figure that most of these are far too big to go in there. Uh, so I'm going to have to go with something small. And I was thinking of doing the space rocket ride in there, kind of uh, one that goes because it was quite subtle. And I could have that roughly here. And then maybe in that bare corner at the moment, which is very overshadowed by this ride, I could have one of my food stands, maybe the uh, Euros uh, rat thing, uh, except I want you to be able to see behind that so you can see the bunch of rats and so maybe I'll pick something else. Uh, but you get the idea. I think two small things in there and obviously the ride will need all this bringing up again so we can recess all the workings in there. And then we should have one end absolutely finished. So yeah, that's the plan. So I need to uh, fill in the rest of this rocks, add some mermaids and then stick the space rocket ride in there. Wow, did you ever see such alluring beauty? <laughs> Any passing sailor is certain to be dashed upon the rocks when they see these three wonderful mermaids or sirens. Fantastic. And it's finally done. Finally, I am actually happy with it. <laughs> Much bigger lake. Uh, I've added some sharks or just some shark fins to add a bit of peril to the water. They're quite sort of plasticky and rubbish. Uh, but I figured that would be appropriate for the ride. I mean, check out the octopus, right? <laughs> uh, and then we've got the three sirens next to the rock, luring sailors to their doom. Uh, and that's all filled in there, uh, relatively simply, just covering the motor. Uh, and I've put some gold treasure on the top in an open chest, just to make that more piratey as well. So yeah, all works well. It's all sort of now a bit more compact even though I've spread it over a larger area. Uh, and I think it's looking really good. It's definitely very, very bright and colourful uh, with all that different uh, uh, shots of pink and blue and green and all the rest of it. And I think in this setting, that diversity is really appropriate. So good. Uh, right, on to the next ride then, which I think I'm going to do here just because, well, I'm very familiar with this area now. Right, well, I decided to put the Ice Queen ride in instead because I figured that would fit. Uh, my first thought that it was a bit too similar in colour to the water, but I figure it's uh, a really useful size to keep this packed and stacked. Still with a little bit there towards the corner for something else. But um, yeah, I think that will really fill this area well and then people can kind of get to it underneath uh, the roller coaster track there. So you can see I've got the wire from the roller coaster threading its way through here where it will link up with the wire for this motor uh, and I'm kind of transposing everything bit by bit from the original build and my cavity layer uh, for that ride uh, kind of picking it up bit by bit and putting it in here and then I've got the task of sort of re uh, filling in the green area so it sort of still is complete but accommodates that new ride so yeah very tricky uh, pulling it all up Putting it all back together again, but uh, slightly different. <laughs> Wish me luck. Good, good. There is the mechanism complete for the uh, Escape from the Ice Queen ride. And I've got to say that that was a lot easier to transfer onto there than, well, anything to do with the Pirate Roller Coaster, <laughs> which has been really hard work all the way through. And I'm hoping that will be the same for the rest of all these rides, because after all, I have done them with all their mechanisms in the right place and all with the three brick cavity and so on. So really arranging the rest of them should be just as easy as this one's been. Uh, you've just got to make sure you can kind of tessellate all the uh, bright green pieces around the hole and so on. So uh, you'll be able to see the end of the medium motor for this ride here uh, and the cable for the other one there. And they're both joined together now to one battery box. So I can have the whole area powered by one switch, both rides. And that is incredibly noisy. Uh, I don't think there's much we can do about that. <laughs> Some people have suggested soundproofing of different uh, types. But um, yeah, anyway, we'll just keep on going. So I think transferring the rest of that ride onto there shouldn't be too bad now. Wow, this is exciting. Look at that. Completely seamless, but definitely packed and stacked, especially when we get the rest of the ride on the top of that. But that looks absolutely great. So let's just show that going around. There you go. So imagine when this whole area 
is done like that it'll be absolutely crazy uh, and a good thing about putting this ride in is we've uh, actually liberated loads of uh, bright green plates loads of supporting bricks and all sorts of plates and stuff like that because uh, obviously we had some here and there before and now well I only need one set so yeah I'm gonna get lots more pieces to uh, finish this off as well right let's get this finished with the uh, top stuff all right and uh, the top is all on and all of the green plates are back in place and it's looking pretty good. The colour scheme, as I say, is very similar to the water, but I don't think it's too bad. And I really like the fact that this ride is accessible from all sides and is kind of equidistant in between the track pieces here. It's not overfaced by the pirate ride and we can see in very easily, uh, but it's also, um, you know, not dominating or spoiling the pirate ride either. So there we go. So let's give that a bit of a whirl. There we go, fantastic, working as well as always. And I can just make the other one that will be connected to this battery box go as well. And that's a lot noisier, isn't it? <laughs> but we can have that going along as well. And this is one corner of the fairground done. Very nice. No wonder the ringmaster is smiling. All right, so I've swapped over the battery box for one that's uh, mounted on the inside of one of my caravans just to keep uh, the authenticity going. I don't know exactly where I'm going to place that, but that will do for now. Uh, but I figured that I might actually get three rides on one battery box in this area. So we've got two, uh, but we've still got this area over here. And I reckon we can get a small ride in there as well and make it really packed and stacked. So the ride I was thinking of was the... Uh, the rocket ride here uh, because it's very small that's the one I was considering for the sort of central area but I'm glad I didn't do that uh, but it will fit rather well there I think and be a very different contrast to the other two so I'm going to try and do that uh, which means I'm going to have to remove one of the 16 by 16 uh, plates in bright green and the cavity that this one needs is a 2 by 8 kind of hole uh, and that can be done by using all of these different smaller plates, uh, leaving that 2 by 8 sort of gap for the workings instead of the 16 by 16 Yeah, so uh, a lot more work to do when I pull out that plate there, replace it with all of these bits and the workings, and then stick the ride on top. Uh, and I've had to gear this ride down uh, just now because when I developed it, it needed the battery box to sort of be on about... Uh, well, third power or something like that uh, in order to get it right. Otherwise, it was going absolutely crazy. Uh, but given that these two need the battery box to be on full power, then, well, I have to gear this one down so it can accommodate uh, full power as well. So I've done that, and that's about the right speed, I think. So I'm happy with that. So let's see how it looks with three rides in the area. Yep, that's in its position, but as you can see, as usual, <laughs> it's two steps forward, one step back, because I've had to dismantle the Ice Queen ride and part of the Pirate Roller Coaster just to get in there and feed the wires through and all the rest of it. But hopefully after this time of closing it up again, uh, I'll never have to do that again. <laughs> Touch wood. Good, good. Ground level is once again restored. And now we have one, two three mechanisms all running from the same battery box. If I just turn that on now, you'll see that one moving, that one turning, and that one whirring. Very good. Right, so now I've just got to put all of the ride sort of superstructures back in place. And wow, this area really will be done, I think. Hopefully. Yay, it's all back in. <laughs> It's a bit disheartening when it's all in pieces spread out over the entire table, uh, but now it's all back. I think it was worth it. And you can see there's absolutely no trace of any of the wires, any of the motors, or even any of the work we've really been doing. Now, I appreciate that some people will probably find this a bit too busy and the rides a bit too close together, uh, but we have got quite a lot of rides to squeeze in. Uh, and not the biggest area to squeeze it into, being the rest of this table and over here. And we do have the huge dodgems uh, to get in as well. Uh, but in the off chance that we do have quite a bit of spare space, then, well, I'll just make more rides, I guess. <laughs> so I don't think that's going to be a problem. 
but wow, uh, it's quite a short video today, but it really does represent quite a large amount of work. I'm absolutely exhausted. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to call it a day there. Uh, but I think it's been a really productive session. Uh, we've changed this front bit immeasurably, and I'm very happy with that and incorporate two more rides and also give myself a lot more confidence with the rest of them that it's going to be not as hard <laughs> as this very first one has been or indeed some of the other bigger ones so i figure i should show you them all running so get ready for some noise there we go there's the space rocket ride the escape from the ice queen ride and the pirate ride but let's not stop there let's get that roller coaster going and over here we've got the carousel, the ferris wheel and even the <laughs> hooker duck. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven whirring all at once and wow that is noisy. <laughs> oh that's got stuck, there we go. Yeah so wow that looks absolutely great. Obviously there's something wrong with that pirate roller coaster to keep it not going around but yeah, this is going to be fantastic. Oh, it's off again. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I've just added a minifigure for a shipwrecked uh, sailor onto the rocks next to the treasure, <laughs> just for a bit more decor. And talking minifigures, I think this scene will be absolutely crazy when it's full of people eating ice cream, hot dogs, and really enjoying themselves and having a good time. Uh, hopefully I'll fill up all of these sort of bands of green and you won't really be able to see any of it at all even though all that work's gone into it. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much for watching. As always, it is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. Uh, and next time on Robin Hood Bricks, uh, we'll be doing a brick haul. And if you want to send me a package so I can open that before Christmas, then do so to the usual address. Uh, and then on Friday, we'll be doing a mock build, though I think I've got quite a few amendments suggested by you for the uh, sushi restaurant. So I think we'll start with that, whatever we do. Uh, and then next Monday, we'll come back to the fairground, uh, where I've still got a lot of energy to uh, put into this area, uh, to make that uh, expanded even further uh, and this time I do think we are going to have to go for this area uh, that's <laughs> the furthest stretch so yeah that might be quite tricky actually anyway whatever we get up to I'm sure we'll have great fun so until then see you <laughs>